Ciao a tutti and welcome to Venice Talks, a podcast series about Venice in Italy. My name is Monica Cesarato and I am a Venetian food and travel blogger. I'm going to put my insider knowledge at your disposal to help you discover Venice at 360 degrees. Each week I will be chatting to the people who really matter, the Venetian. So follow me on the discovery of his artisans, writers, fashion designers, artists, glass makers, bloggers and much much more. Come to visit Venice the right and sustainable way. You can find me on my blog www.monicacesarato.com and also on all social media. Enjoy the episode! Welcome to Venice Talks, episode number 20. Welcome back everybody to Venice Talks. The guest today is a very good friend of mine. She's a really, really good Venetian travel blogger and she's also a food technologist. Today, though, with Roberta Gennar- Gennaro, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, Roberta, I got your name wrong right to start. Hi, Roberta, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. And I'm already smiling about what you're saying because most people <laughs> from Southern Italy call me Gennaro. That is a Neapolitan famous uh, surname. So this ah, just okay. makes me laugh. And that's a very oh, good start for our conversation. And, and listen, thinking about it, maybe, maybe, it does originate from Gennaro in Naples, your, your surname, because well, you know we call Zane Gianni. So yes, maybe, maybe. It's not. It it's not. not because it should be related to January ah, or something like that. Ah, and this is what they say about my family name, that, ah, as you know, is very common in Venice, yeah. along with the three other family names, yeah. you know? Okay, so how are you anyway, first of all? I'm fine, thanks, and I'm so happy to talk to you that uh, this is, uh, for me, the nicest moment uh, in this week so far. But it's oh, thank you so much. Yes. Even though we decided that we're going to talk about a very heavy uh, discussion, a very, very heavy topic, uh, even though usually I just try to be very light, but I wanted to talk to you about this because I know it's something that you care a lot about and it's something that I care about a lot, and it is how to do Venice in a sustainable way. So I prepared some questions that I know you prepared yourself. uh, And so I think we'll start straight away because, you know, we don't have much time. So first of all, Roberta, in your opinion, how can we travel to Venice in a more sustainable way? Well, uh, when we say in a more sustainable way, we should know beforehand uh, uh, what we are comparing to. Because mm. Venice is an island or an archipel or a, a group of islands yeah. that is surrounded by water. Mm-hmm. And by definition, it can be reached uh, in very different ways. Uh, also because uh, Venice has been helped in the last hundred years by the bridge. Yeah. The, the two bridges actually that can be, I mean, they can be crossed by train and mm-hmm. by car. Yep. By bicycle also, even though I would like to do that and I haven't been brave enough uh, to take... Uh, well, the they have a, they built a brand new cycle lane. I know, lane, I know. So I, know, I, know. Now, I will yeah. take it. I did it uh, like 30 years ago and I wanted to go to the Lido with my sister. It was in the summertime and uh, we took the... I will tell you very briefly, we took the bicycle, then the ferry and then when we arrived at the Lido, it started uh, raining cats and dogs. <laughs> and it was nice because we are laughing about that. We were not so much prepared to that. We wanted to go to the beach. Of course. And we went to the beach anyway, but it was funny, finally, oh, okay. you know? Uh-huh. Just to introduce uh, how to arrive in Venice in a nice way. But it's, it's not uh, as simple as we might think because uh, many things like bicycle is not allowed in Venice city center. Exactly. What's the English term for monopathy, Monica? Oh, uh, oh gosh, uh, scooter, oh, gosh. Little, scooter. little scooters. Like scooter. Yeah. Um, after, in a few minutes, uh, just let's uh, spend uh, a, a little time uh, talking about uh, what the tourists look like in St. Mark's Square, okay? And then we'll go back talking about monopathy. Okay. So going to Venice in a sustainable way can be done in different ways because, for example, if we arrive by train, uh, we take the train along with a lot of of other people Mm -hmm. and we uh, disembark in the heart of Venice because you know that when you take the stairs out of the station 
every time I see the view from Santa Lucia station, uh, my heart beats, even though we live, me and I live, uh, me and you live so close to Venice because it's a breathtaking view for me. It, it, I it's, it is, uh, I, I find this so interesting, Roberta, because I have so many American and English friends that they tell me that uh, the moment they set off the, you know, they come out of the train station and they come down the stairs and they find themselves uh, with a view of uh, San Simeone Piccolo and uh, Ponte degli Scalzi, they have like uh, their heart stop. Uh, yeah. It's so interesting for me that somebody local has exactly the same feeling. It's incredible. I, I like this. It. I cannot do without it. And I tell you what, I have dozen pictures of myself coming out of the railway station. And every time I take pictures, I say, what the hell are you doing? You have dozens like that, but I still like to take this kind of pictures, you know? Mm -hmm. And from there, you can walk. That is the most sustainable way to discover Venice, especially in the center, in the historical center. Mm -hmm. Or you can take a boat. You can also arrive in Venice by boat. And for example, if you link it with the other usual way for our friends coming from far away that are coming by plane, by air, mm -hmm. when you arrive in uh, the airport, in the main Marco Polo airport, you can take a boat directly from there. Mm -hmm. That means that you have uh, flown from far away country that, that is not so sustainable in itself because flying, as we know, produces a lot of pollution. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, and in many cases, it, you cannot replace it with any of other course. way, um, of, of course. course. And then you have the opportunity to take a boat, a private or a public boat, uh, directly to, to, the, to the historic center. And this is uh, good because uh, you will be uh, astonished again by the views that you have uh, from mm -hmm. the airport to the city center. This thing looks uh, normal for people arriving to Venice or for people like me and you who explain to the others how to arrive in Venice, but there are just two airports in the whole world that can uh, take you by boat to the city center. One is oh. Venice and the other one is Boston in the US. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't know this. Gosh, I knew I had to interview you because you always got these little things. You always know these things. Um, right. I don't know if it's so useful for people, but your Bostonian friends, I'm sure you have some friends from Boston, Massachusetts, will be happy to know that uh, Boston and Venice share this uh, unique uh, feature. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, good. And, right. and another important thing yeah. is that uh, you can be sustainable throughout your journey in Venice. Mm -hmm even though sometimes it's not uh, easy because uh, we will be soon thirsty when you arrive in Venice because you walk a lot, a lot you take uh, your weight uh, around that could be luggage uh, mm -hmm. or yourself or, or a camera, for example. And uh, many times when you stop for a drink, uh, the first thing that you are given is a plastic glass or a plastic bottle. That is a huge problem, especially when Venice is overcrowded. Exactly. In the, in the middle of the season, that means that the rubbish is not everywhere, but often it is placed in, incorrectly in the wrong place. Also because there are just a few thousand uh, beings in Venice, that is a big problem. Mm -hmm. Because people sometimes don't don't find a place inside and have to throw rubbish outside. Mm -hmm. Also, because some people are, are not well uh, informed about how to where to place things. Yeah, or oh, they're not very uh, polite and educated people. Let's say not polite. <laughs> they could also throw things uh, into water. In oh yeah. Are, are sometimes uh, full of uh, rubbish in any kind of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a huge problem when they have to clean the canals because we're used to see uh, at the television or on the web, or on the web uh, scenes where uh, uh, very, very um, crazy things come out of the Oh, canal. yes. I mean, they even dug out uh, motor scooters out That's of the canal. <laughs> <laughs> my yeah. my question wasn't uh, it wasn't what's a motor scooter doing the canal was how did they get it there <laughs> yes because <laughs> you know furniture for example wooden furniture I uh, know. sofas uh, crazy I mean, chairs uh, crazy. whatever big things you know uh, tires i mean yeah. uh, 
uh, we could do a complete uh, a complete uh, list, list of, that. of the most interesting thing that uh, all of a sudden appeared uh, from the yes. bottom of the canals yes 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 also when you eat uh, you are taking some time to get uh, things food uh, in plastic that is no good at all yeah but you can choose where to buy food and drinks uh, in places where they are given in glass or in yeah. wood or in dispos disposable thing that can be uh, organic for example and this is a trend that's been very popular in the last mm. years both in Venetian uh, places and uh, in uh, uh, places belonging to chains uh, because uh, yeah. it could be a bad thing and I don't like it very much in itself but you know that Venice is packed with uh, multinationals from uh, yeah. Uh, hamburger, coffees, yeah. uh, bread, uh, things like mm -hmm. that, uh, that we cannot do without. I mean, me and you will be taken to taste, to try food and drink in Venetian places. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have to explain what it means because Venetian means, uh, can mean different things, you know. But it's also important, for example, that uh, foreigners can find their, their own uh, uh, brands uh, and the mm -hmm. possibility to try their, their food just for once, but then we will always take them to Venetian places. Let me stop you there one second. Let's go back to uh, drinking and water. Yes. Uh, one thing is important in Venice is that we have a lot of fountains. Exactly, we do, but I will tell you from my last day's experience that uh, possibly this year is due to uh, lack of water. And ah, okay, uh, yes. Lack of, lack of uh, rain. Mm. Uh, many of these fountains were stopped yep. and you, you will find less and less even in places where you are going with your own bottle to to refi refill that mm. is not available anymore yeah. but that's so, only that's only because at the moment we we are going we're still going through from may last uh, from may this year through a long 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 drought so they i mean they could have easily put uh, Mm. The mechanism on the little fountains with a button so the water only comes this out. The official, the this request, is the official but... explanation. Uh, yeah. Believe me, I think it will be hard to get back to the real number so? of fountains that were oh. in the past. And also those that are active, for example, in Vista di Spagna, that there is one that we that all of us have been using one time or another, mm -hmm. is uh, pouring water in at a very low speed, low, low speed, really. Mm -hmm. So you will see possibly people in a in a in a road waiting to mm -hmm. their bottles, you know. Yeah. So you were saying you were going to talk about some Mark Square. Yes, uh, uh, the famous monopack, you know, is one yeah. of the things along with bicycles that you cannot take around while, while walking in Venice. Yes, but the little the little, sco the little uh, scooters. Yes, exactly. These scooters families especially that uh, tell to their children that can they, they will be happy using this, this stuff when walking in Venice, they cannot, but they do use it. Yesterday I was in St. Mark's Square and uh, uh, I saw a family, an Italian family, uh, complaining to the police because they were told that they had to fold it and to put it under their arm because it was forbidden. Yeah. And they were discussing because they opposed to this law that is a local law. Mm -hmm. After 10 minutes discussion, when I looked at them from far, but not far enough for them not to see me, mm -hmm. because these two police women were women, I believe they were uh, uh, disappointed about the way how the tourists uh, behave. And they mm -hmm. called the radio, the radio, the, their colleagues, and two uh -huh. police men came along trying to explain again all the story. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I didn't take pictures because it was not nice for me to do that, but I yeah. listened to their, them carefully and the excuses and, uh, and what they pointed out uh, not to uh, act uh, correctly was, was very bad for me because uh, this is uh, an explanation how people uh, feel when they come to Venice. This is a very important issue about sustainability. Ah, and you mean that they feel that they can do whatever they want? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. That yeah. means that sustainability should be a practical thing that we should put in place in every action, everyday action in our own hometown or mm -hmm. when we're traveling around. But people just believe that when you're going, they're going around, they could do whatever, whatever they want. And in Venice, this is especially... Yeah. Um, 
uh, a real, real problem, a real situation. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so, so sustainability shouldn't be just about being careful of uh, using plastic, not using plastic, blah, 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 but you should also respecting the laws and respecting the people, the people of, of the country or of a city where you're going to. Okay, uh, we go back to this uh, to the sustainability later on. But uh, now, in your opinion, what alternative experiences can we find in Venice apart from doing, you know, the usual? So going and visit uh, the Samar Square and Rialto and doing, you know, your classical tours and stuff. What other experiences uh, would you suggest for somebody to, to see Venice with different eyes? Well, uh, taking a gondola can be as much as a tourist experience uh, as everybody would like to do when in Venice, but you can take uh, different kinds of gondolas and you can also experience gondola from one side to another of the Grand Canal. And I think uh, we like to do that uh, and we like to suggest this kind of little thing to our guests. Oh, you're talking guests. about the traghetto? Yes, the traghetto. Okay. The traghetto. But also uh, the whole uh, boats that uh, go around Venice, uh, both of the Grand Canal and the canals, uh, are nice, uh, both uh, public transportation that looks like a very usual common thing, but it is not because you can see Venice from another perspective. And also rowing in Venice, yes. we've been talking about that in the past, uh, and I hope we will be brave enough uh, to try this. I'm actually going to interview them in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so then after the interview, as I see if I can get a sneak uh, uh, lesson with them or something, <laughs> and then we can talk about it. I like I it. I, I've been wanting to try for a long time, I've got to say. Me too. Me too. Also because there are different kinds of boats that you can take. And it's also a different experience according to the kind of boat that you use in Venice and where you use it, because the canals are one thing. Yeah, and there could be a lot of distractions. You could look uh, uh, around uh, the nice places that you're seeing, but also the water that is uh, beneath your feet, just to take care about what you, where you're going, you know. Or you could go to the lagoon. Absolutely. Why talking about the lagoon? Because it's a completely different environment. Absolutely. There is uh, Venice in the historical center, and there is Venice outside of Venice. But yeah. what is Venice outside outside of Venice? Is it the small islands that uh, all the people want to see that uh, are just a half hour boat away, like uh, Murano or Burano, or is it something farther away, like Sant'Erasmo mm -hmm. or the Lagoon, in, uh, in, in other directions that could be heading north towards, for example, Altino, or the south going towards Chioggia? Mm -hmm. where there are different uh, things to see a more natural environment with birds uh, and green areas, trees, uh, um, kitchen gardens, for example, where the nice uh, vegetables are grown, very precious and typical like artichokes or very nice fruit and vines because uh, Venice is not uh, usually associated to wine produ pr production, but you know- It used that, to be. Uh, it used to be and it's Absolutely. going to be in future and it's Absolutely. a very nice perspective to visit Venice with the with the respect to all the agricultural activities mm -hmm. like wine growing and this can be seen uh, in small uh, uh, vines that we can find uh, in, in the city center but uh, also in Mazzorbo, for example, in nice places where they grow and explain to you what uh, uh, winemaking was like in the past in Venice. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice thing where you combine the historical and the natural aspects of this unique city. Mm -hmm. And, and the rowing is uh, I particularly like it because it's something that can be done with all the family as well. Exactly. I wanted to arrive to this point that Venice has a very bad reputation being an expensive city. I don't agree with that because I hope you agree with me that there are many things that should not be for, done for free for sure, but are not expensive. Absolutely, yeah. Going around by boat can be expensive, but you also can find out a situation where you don't spend a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, with your family. You could also rent a boat, an electrical boat, for example. Oh, yes. Uh, a couple of years ago in the summertime we, we did that we did that and we had so much fun it was yeah. so fun so much fun i love very, it very much fun it's a fun to go around with the foreigner people and to imagine that we could take our 
or stuff, both uh, around the Venice canals and the lagoon, provided we have uh, a proper information and training about what to do and mm -hmm. uh, about the time we have available, because that the electrical engines are not big enough to take you around at a high speed, no, neither at high speed nor too far away. So mm -hmm. you just have to, to prepare yourself where you want to go and how long they don't they pollute. <clears throat> and they don't pollute. This is very important because these boats are silent, they don't they make noise that is also very important in Venice, and they don't produce pollution. So and uh, the company that we, we, we did the with that I'm actually going to interview them as well. I and mean, it's uh, uh Venice yeah. classic boats, yeah. yes, yeah. Uh, I love it because they restore old boats and bring yeah. them back to life. So that's another important thing because sustainability is there as well. I mean, yeah. uh, to take upcycling. an old boat. Exactly, yeah. upcycling. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, what other experiences? Did, did you have any other experiences or, or any biking. other? Biking. Oh, biking. But you will never, but we just said we cannot bring the bike into the city yeah. of Venice, yeah. but yeah. you can do bicycling in other islands like uh, Sant'Erasmo, for example, that is the garden and the kids garden of Venice that I recommend visiting both uh, in mid-season like springtime or autumn yep. or in different seasons when it's colder like in winter or when it's warm and hot like in summertime when you see different colors and different atmosphere. Yep. Beautiful, have beautiful islands you can spend a day there you can have a picnic and you get to see all the agriculture and uh, you're you is so interesting because you're in the middle of the water but at the same time you're in the middle of the countryside it's a weird uh, weird exactly. feeling and <laughs> it's cheap. you just spend five euros for the first two hours and then oh, you spend okay. one or two euros per hour so because you don't need to be basically cycling the whole day, you just can to because the island is pretty yes. small in about an hour and mm -hmm. an hour and a half is done. Yes, it's done. Another nice thing that you can find, and it's in particular thing for Venice that you can find in every single island is a little cemetery. Also mm. in San Terasmo, you will find a little cemetery er surrounded by the countryside. And it's very like um, nice and uh, cute. Even though you're going to see a place where, where you were, that people are, are, are having rest. Yeah, so it, it needs to be respected because unfortunately, respect I've, heard the story, yeah. I've heard stories of people going picnicking in the cemeteries of Venice and that's mm -hmm. not, not, not sustainable. Not, that's not, not good. Sustainable, not logical. And also, I always tell people that are doing bad things in Venice, please, would you do the same in your hometown? And exactly. the, the answer is always no, because it's illogical that you go to your cemetery and you take a sandwich out and you eat it for sure. Exactly. But people have to be educated when coming to Venice. Absolutely. You want to talk about the ticket. I don't want to talk about the ticket. No, 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 we're not talking but about we that. No, that. no, we're not talking about that. But we go back to cycling. You can do yeah. cycling where also? In Lido, right? In Lido, you have a huge opportunity to visit this tiny a narrow but very long island that is running around the, from the north to the south of the lagoon and you have uh, a lot of places where there will be you the sea on one side the lagoon the other side and when you when you get to the south of Lido you will see Pellestrina and Chioggia in front of you and you can reach these other islands, the island like Pellestrina that is still narrow and long by ferry and continue your bike tour for more and more kilometers, seeing a completely different situation because Lido is an elegant island with different roads and nice hotels, Liberty style, that was uh, one of the reasons why Lido became a famous place uh, to go to the, to the seaside and to experience mm -hmm. Venice since uh, more than 100 years ago. Whereas Pellestrina is completely different because it's a fisherman, fisherman's yeah, and it's place uh, with different houses. That means also another thing. Every little island in Venice has its, its peculiarities. Yeah. And when you visit it, you will see, oh, wow, it's different. You are in Venice, but you don't feel being in Venice. The smell is different. Uh, the atmosphere is different. Uh, and you will have different experiences from one island to the other. Mm. Now, if you had to pick a museum, which one would you recommend? Of I mean, this is 
the hardest question you could ask me, but <laughs> I thank you for asking me that because there are places that are so much linked to Venice that uh, uh, when you take friends, for example, around Venice, you could think about very famous museums and palaces you can visit in Venice, like Palazzo Ducale, just to name mm -hmm. uh, one of the first that you might think. Or also the archaeological museum is a peculiar mm -hmm. place because Venice has a history that is 1,500 years long, but there, is there was also another Venice before Venice that mm -hmm. you could visit and that te and tells you about the strong relationship between uh, the city uh, surrounded by the sea and the mainland that is still Venice, like Alpino or Concordia Sagittaria or other places that were inhabited before Venice was founded, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, these are not my favorite because uh, for me, the two, the two most important museums when you visit, visiting Venice are uh, in Burano, the Lace Museum that we oh. saw together last year. Oh yeah, we did, it was, and it was very interesting. Very interesting and pretty unique, even though lace making is not uh, an activity that is uh, carried out only in Venice, but also in other cities. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Glass Museum in Murano, that is also very important, uh, that mm -hmm. tells you a history, a century long history and the link between Murano and Glass. Uh, mm -hmm. that can be carried out in different ways, like historical ways uh, that is very well explained in the museum, and also more modern uh, ways uh, uh, how to manufacture glass uh, that we can also see in the Stanze del Vetro in San Giorgio Maggiore, that is uh, another way how to, to see mm -hmm. glass making and the, the use of glass in a modern way and in different uh, places so that you can also place uh, a nice uh, vase in your house uh, and made out of Murano glass. And I particularly like that you mentioned these two museums, the Burano and the Murano one, because they are little museums. Uh, exactly. There are never so many crowds. I mean, you never go that uh, packed and you have to queue, like when you have to go to Peggy Guggenheim or the Doge's Palace. So it's yes. quite nice as well, because you get to the very cute, the very, you know, the, the Murano glass is bigger than the Lace Museum, but they are, um, how can I say, they're warm. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're nicer to, I mean, I find them nicer to visit. Yeah. So yeah. But there, everything uh, within a reasonable time without yeah. uh, thinking about a uh, half day inside the museum, that is logical when you go to bigger places, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, I always tell everybody that uh, they should stay in Venice for at least four to five days, and then I go on and explain why. Do you agree with me? And why do you think people should stay longer? Well, I do agree with you because Venice has so many things to see. That also for us, uh, coming back to Venice every time means that we're going to discover possibly new things or see things uh, in a different perspective, with different colors, different uh, atmosphere. And just around the corner, there are places that we can have discarded the time we, we, we came the time before that, that really are nice either for the things we can see or the people that are living there and that can show you how they live in Venice. Uh, talking to the Venetians is a huge opportunity to discover a, a place that is not uh, uh, the same uh, from one month to the other changes, and that uh, the next time you will come to Venice, you will see in a different way. But for sure, Venice needs to be discovered little by little, because every day you can do different things that can be more cultural things like visiting museums, as, as we said uh, a few minutes before, but also uh, strolling around uh, and uh, visiting uh, the, the Cali and uh, going in, inside the, Cali. the shops. Uh, mm -hmm. The Cali, yes, uh, to see uh, the craftsmanship that is carried out in Venice, uh, from textiles uh, to beads, uh, to um, also glass manufacturing for sure, but also uh, how gondolas are made in the square, for, in a square, for yeah. example, an activity that we can see from the other side of the canal, or mm -hmm. that we can take the opportunity to visit uh, inside uh, and to be explained by the artisan how they are made, you know? Mm -hmm. 
also taking a cooking class, for example. Yeah, about. of course, we should, shouldn't they? <laughs> and I have to that will explain to you from the simple plates uh, uh, to prepare every day to the more uh, complicated uh, things that uh, can be put on our tables for in special occasions, more family occasions, things like that, is important because uh, every single experience tells you about this unique city. Uh, mm -hmm. I tell you what, uh, we uh, like to travel, both uh, you and I, mm -hmm. and we will find uh, uh, paintings about Venice in the most important museum throughout the world. Uh, and when you see pictures about Venice, what it was like 200 or 500 years ago, it's exactly the same as it yeah. looks. I think this is another unique thing about Venice. That possibly is the, the only city I believe that has preserved its features and its uh, uh, skyline and the panorama, the, the views from yeah, uh, most of it. Yeah, yeah, today. yeah, you yeah know? it's very, yeah, well, yeah, it's true. When you come to talk about Venice to uh, uh, your American friends, as I do sometimes, uh, I was in, I, I tell you this very short uh, story, I was in Las Vegas uh, back in 1999. And the uh, Venetian hotel had just been inaugurated. There was okay. uh, St. Mark's uh, Square uh, rebuilt, uh, the bell and mm -hmm. gondolas uh, going around these tiny canals that had been reconstructed. Yeah, we, I, with a truck underneath, yes. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. I was uh, making a very strange face when I arrived there. And <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> Was oh it? Well, I can imagine your face. I yes, can imagine you can see my face, but you know what it looks like, you know. <laughs> and they told, told people, Mamma mia, I come from Venice. What is this? So they stared at me and they asked me, But is it really like that? And I must have said uh, something like more or less, but you should do it. <laughs> Because these people evidently had never ever seen Venice, but it was a nice conversation anyway, you know. Yeah, it's like when I went once, I went down Rimini in Italian miniatura, you know, and you got a little yeah. train that goes through the, uh, yeah. sorry, the little boat, not the train that goes through the major cities, and you had like Rome, Florence, and Venice, or something else. And when you go through Venice, you go like, oh, look, the Rialto Bridge. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's yes. so weird it's just so it's weird. weird but it's funny in a way when you want to see everything in a short time but as you of have course. asked me a few minutes ago it's uh, strange uh, when you try to see many things in a little yeah. time because you will get a lot of confusion in your mind possibly exactly. a lot of pictures in your uh, uh, device uh, whether it's a camera or mobile phone yeah. And uh, afterwards, you will have to put the things in order and uh, ask yourself if you have really seen something or you have just made a lot of uh, photos in, in, a, in a hurry and a lot of confusion. Yeah, you know? yeah. I always but, say uh, we spoke about this on one of the first episodes uh, with uh, Romana Brugnerotto, Roma in Venice. Uh, yes. We kept saying, uh, you know, do your research. That's the most important part of any trip. Do the research yes. before and find yes. out yes. what there is to be seen. Yes. Uh, yes. And try to find out. Uh, and, and don't go to places just because you have to. I always yes. say, build yes. your trip according to what you like. If you don't like museums, nobody says that you have to go to a museum. Yes. You're not obliged. I mean, You're not obliged. You the but, things you like best. but make sure that before you go, find out what there is there but uh, you know things that you like and uh, above all with Venice when people start to do the research they so realize that there is so much that can be done but it's so obvious that it cannot be done in one or two days but automatically uh, the person should be going like oh my god I need at least five six maybe a week uh, you know but I think that is the main problem at the moment no, uh, people less and less do the research before flying out yeah. and yeah. that is a big big problem and I think we sh we need to go back to that stage yes. Yes. where, uh, where uh, people do read yeah. a guide blogs blog like yours blog like mine and you know yeah, there's yeah. so much information yeah. now there's, there isn't an excuse anymore the, the information is out there now so you know so but, I, can, I can tell you and a very important thing where yeah. to see Venice from a top of what? Top oh yes. Of tower, everybody will be in a row waiting to go up St. Mark's Bell. That is one possibility. But for example, in San Giorgio, very few people go to the top. I know. Bell. I always manage to go without queuing. It from there. 
or from uh, Torcello, for example. Oh, I've never done that one. Oh, I've never done the Torcello one. So nice. You must go there because it's in Italy, you're surrounded by the lagoon. You can see the mountains if you're lucky. Okay. And the gardens and Venice and all the lagoon around it is spectacular and unique. Where else can you see the lagoon from the top? Absolutely. In the city center, in the historical center, you can go to the Fondaco to see yeah. also to see. You need to book, Evo. You, you need, need to be to booked. Book. You need to book, or you can go to an Altana to our friends or to top of the hotel. Mm -hmm. And also, it's, it's nice, but also, we should talk about the sustainability with respect to pub public and private places because many places that now are private are not available to the public anymore. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So very sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, Roberta, thank you so much for all of this information. It was really, really lovely talking to you. Um, you. If uh, our listeners uh, want to find you, what is your website? You can find me on Gamberetta. That is my blog that has been active for around 11 years now. You will find experiences from different corners of the world. But Veneto region and Venice are very much covered with respect to different activities uh, including some of the things we have been talking about today. Mm -hmm. And my on social is, media, wh where do they find you? Because my name, as we said before, is Roberta Senaro with a Z. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find me with my personal name, my, my personal account on Facebook, or also my page that is Gamberetta still on Facebook. Uh, whereas uh, Instagram, my Instagram name is Roberta Gamberetta that is uh, uh, putting together my name uh, and the blog name. And the blog. Robbie, yeah. it was so, so nice talking to you, but me and you are going to see each other uh, soon, I hope, because you're always yes. busy I like I am. Well, I can be there. Where, yes. where are you going to, where are you off to for your next travels? Oh, well, I'm going around Italy for business reasons, for trade shows. I will be in Milan this week and I will go to the Italy center. I have to go next week, as I told you la, la, in the last mm -hmm. days, but uh, possibly I have to postpone it to mid-December. I will visit uh, wine uh, producers uh, and uh, archaeological sites. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, the, it's a, this plan is in progress or been changing plans a lot of times and we'll have to update it uh, I suppose it will be nice because Italy is beautiful everywhere and also for me going back to places means that you can always see different things oh yeah. well Robbie it was so lovely talking to you and well I'm gonna see you soon I hope to talk to you soon another time and maybe we can talk about some other things then it's Okay. I think there are lots of, art, of things we can talk about in Venice. Thank you very much. Grazie mille, Monica. It was very nice talking to you today. Thank you. Ciao, cara. Ciao, ciao. ciao cara. Thank you so much, Roberta, for this beautiful chat. You can find Roberta on her blog www.gamberetta.it and on social media as Roberta Zennaro or Roberta Gamberetta. Thank you again for listening. If you want to book a food tour or a cooking experience with me, you can find me on my blog www.monicacesarato.com or at cookingvenice.com and also on all social medias with the handle at Monica Cesarato and at Cooking Venice. Feel free to leave a comment or write to info at monicacesarato.com for more information about the people featured in the podcast or Venice. Bye bye!